Hi, Caroline Daniel from the uh, Financial Times. The FT Weekend is here. Good morning. Good morning. You're going to start us off with this story. We, we sort of talked about this momentarily earlier on. Uh, squirrel meat. This is a story we've all been waiting for, obviously, this morning. So Absolutely. this is a story about a, a pasty contest in Cornwall. Yes. And different people can make different kinds of pasties. And apparently it's an amazing contest. It, it attracts attention from Australia, people from Mexico are interested in Cornish pasties. And they're called the they're sort of pasty Oscars. In fact, they're called the Oggy Oscars because the word in Cornwall for pasty is Oggy. Yes. And one candidate this year has decided to make squirrel pasties. Is, do we have a problem with that? Um, you would probably, if you are the squirrel's mother, you might have a problem with it. <laughs> or, <laughs> a say that. or a squirrel. Or a squirrel, but yes. So apparently it tastes like, you know, and the guy who's making these squirrel pasty says in the next 10 years we'll all be eating squirrel, he claims. What else, what other things are they making out of? Is there any other, any, any other uh, ingredients? Chili, chili paste, lamb, but also what's fascinating about the piece is I had no idea it dates back to the 13th century Cornish pasties were started then. And last year they got their own geographical distinction. So they've That's been branded right. in Europe to say you can only be in a Cornish pasty if it's made in a certain way and made in Cornwall. That's right. And mining companies, all you know, mining businesses around the world love their pasties, and it's a really a global phenomenon. The fact that you've got people flying in from everywhere is they're just so convenient, convenient. aren't they? Yes. I had one just the other day, which I really enjoyed. Now look, we all, we all decided. I don't know if we're going to be able to get into this tiny picture here. But we're all really excited if we could all do this. We want to do this, don't we, Karen? Exactly. I want to do this. So this is a... It's a bit like the James Bond experience. A Chinese-born American was a fan of Thunderball when he has the uh, jet sort of um, jetpack on jet the back. Pack, yep. And he's decided to create his own jetpack in Florida. And actually, so you can fly above the water at 30 feet high at 25 miles an hour and basically fly across the water. And it's all propelled by a, you know, a sort of hose which goes into the back of the jetpack and the water sort of is, spruces down and then you can fly along. Well, and it, it sounds fantastic fun, it's, but it it's a great really thing dangerous. To, it's a great thing to write home about. I mean, who could, you know, the idea of a James Bond experience on a jetpack is fabulous. But, in fact, our correspondent who goes does fall in the water quite I a lot. I want one. But oh. she's quite safe. But actually, you know, something to do as a postcard to your mates and impress them. Um, but it doesn't say that Ursula Andrus comes out of the water whilst you're doing this, like they did in Thunderball <laughs> mm. when uh, it happened then. Uh, now, you can take us some more serious issues and uh, Times front page. Yeah. Taxing well, the rich. This is, this is obviously becoming the big issue um, ahead of the budget. So the Times has looked at what's happening with the mansion tax. A few years ago, the Liberal Democrats advocated a mansion tax. So the debate is about taxing wealth rather than income. And what this looks at is sort of poor old people in Chelsea and Kensington who own houses over the value of two million. And they're looking at taxing these in, in a different way. And apparently one quarter of all the houses over the value of two million are all in Kensington and Chelsea. So they're obviously very concerned there. But it's one of the big issues that's being debated at the moment by David Cameron and uh, Vince Cable about how do you actually find a way to tax the rich without increasing general taxation. Uh, take us to the story in the Daily Mail. This is a slightly bizarre story about the um, Women's Institute is going places that we never expected them to go. Um, it's setting up in a women's jail and they are basically having the Women's Institute comes in to a room which is apparently covered in butterfly paintings and is teaching um, some of the ladies or prisoners at the jail how to bake cakes, you know, how to have a coffee morning, um, different kinds of cookie contests. And it's a story about how they're trying to adapt some of the prisoners to, you know, life on the outside when you can presumably go to women's institute events. And it's part of it, but the prison is privatised, which is also a big theme in some of the other newspapers about privatisation coming into uh, um, the home office and into prisons. Now, when you travel on a train, are you one of the kind of people who goes into a silent carriage or do you like to have a chat on the train? Silent for me. Silent for me, but I'm, I'm a bit mixed on this. Um, this is a story about um, the Channel Tunnel. Mm. It's apparently now going to allow people to use their phones. They've got some new device which allows, even when it's very deep in the ground, you can actually use your phone See, on the I'm train. I'm a fan oh. of this. So I'm not a silent carriage person. So, so you're quite it, works, noisy. it works under the Channel Tunnel. But apparently there's a difference between the French and English attitude to phones. So apparently on, this already happens on the Paris metro system, that you can already use your phone you know, in the underground. And so they're kind of used to it there, but they're more respectful. Whereas in England, we're pretty noisy about using our phones on trains. I just don't like hearing other people's conversations. Don't, don't listen to them. But you can't help it sometimes, Exactly. I, I must say, on my bus journey to work, the last thing I want to hear is someone shouting to their phone about, you know, what's for dinner. 
Um, and I actually like quiet spaces when you're actually travelling. It's a uh, kind of luxury. You, to, can go, uh, you can go in your noisy carriages. Uh, I'd be happy. I'd be absolutely happy. Carol, it's always good to have you Thank with you us. Very Thank much. you very Thanks. much. Let's see what's coming for the next half hour.